Welcome back everybody to another brand new video where we are continuing the list of jobs on this Mark II Escort. So dream car giveaways own this car. They run a competition site. So pretty much as soon as I give them back, it's gonna go live. It gives you lot a chance to win it. It is a spectacular car that we're just doing a few little jobs on. So last video, I only managed to get the one job done, which was the gauges. So let's pull my finger out and crack on with a few more jobs. Job number two is the washers. So during the last video, I was down here sorting out this wire and loom and I noticed this little wire hanging down at the bottom. Now the terminal on it, one is flat and one is horizontal. And that usually means it's a washer pump wire and loom. So got me thinking, I had a look in the engine bay, can't see a washer bottle anywhere. And also then noticed it hasn't even got washer jets in it. Now this car doesn't need an MOT, it's too old now. So really you can have no washer jets, but if you go into a show or something like that and you get a dirty screen, you wanna just be able to you know, wash it to see where you're going. It's quite important really. So this engine bay in this car looks amazing and it's always horrible to have to try and find a space for a big plastic white washer bottle, which looks a bit awful. So with my last Mark I and the custom Mark II, I came up with a solution and that is this. One of these flexible windscreen washer bottles. Best thing about this, because it is thin, I managed to hide it behind this kick panel down here. So when you actually fill it up, it inflates and it fills all the gaps in the body and it doesn't push that panel out, it hides it nice. And then the other thing, the washer jets on these are super expensive. So I bought this, which is, you get it off eBay, it's rally style washers. And all it does, it clips around the wiper arm, which I do on the passenger wiper arm. And then it's got four jets on it, just sprays it all over the screen. So keeps it nice and neat. And that's the next job we're doing. So let's get this kick panel off. There we go, that's our kick panel out. So the ideal thing about this is, can you see this little ledge there? Well, where's my washer bottle? The only thing that sticks out on this washer bottle is the pump at the bottom. And in the back of there is that recess and that fits quite snugly into that recess. Then all I've got to do is cut a little horseshoe shape out the top so the neck fits. And that's basically it. When you pour the water in, it will inflate, but long ways. You could probably only get half a litre of water in there before it starts pushing this away, but at least you've got washers. I mean, if this was a daily, you would fit a normal washer bottle basically. But worst case, you're on the motorway, going to a show, load of crap flicks up the screen. You've got water there to clear your screen. So I'll get this in now. We've got black washer pipe because clear looks rubbish. And I've got the wiring loom, which I'll extend up to that loom that's there. And then we'll fit the jet the other side. Sound. Okay, we've got our washer bottle in. I've just pinned it at the top. I've extended those wires up to the loom and I've thread the washer pipe up, round and through the bulkhead where the wiring loom comes out. It will be a sod to fill up. Uh, for my other two cars, I bought a little watering can from a garden center. Basically you put it up in there and just turn it sideways and it does fill it up. Again, if you were gonna use this as a daily, that would get annoying, but more than likely you're only gonna fill it once a year. Got the cover, I'll show you this now. So that fits round there, clips in. I'll screw it in once I've checked it works, but you can see everything's still nice and flush and you can't even tell there's a washer bottle there really. Ideal for when you just want that engine bay to look real clean with nothing in it. 
So now is the really, really hard bit, which I'll show you. So just to give you an idea of what it's gonna look like, got this old piece of pipe. We're gonna come up through this little vent here, and then the pipe is gonna be tucked under, and then that washer jet is gonna clip on there. It'll all look really neat. Hopefully we can get it like the other one and you can't even really tell it's there in the first place, which is what we want. The hardest bit of this whole job is this, I'll show you. We've now got this pipe here that we've run through the bulkhead. We've got to get it up this drain hole and inside this heater bowl is like a water deflector. It's like a three inch tall top hat that we've got to get around and then up to that vent. Now, thinking about it, I should have probably put the pipe down through the vent and round the heater bowl and then out the hole. That would have been much easier. But uh, being the typical bloke, I've threaded it this way now and even if it takes me about four hours to put it in that way, I'm going to do it instead of just unconnecting it. So let's have a go. One eternity later. So that's the washer bottle filled up nice. The cover's on. It's all looking proper tidy. Let's see if it works, shall we? This end, I've managed to tuck it all away nice. You can hardly see if it's there. Will it work? Jobs are good on. That's another one ticked off our list. Time for job number three, which is the exhaust. So this was a problem that Dream Car Giveaways noticed when they drove it over here to drop it off. And also I could hear it when I was just running it up to check the temperature. We got this kind of problem. So underneath there, if you have a look, where the exhaust comes up, it comes up tight because it's so low, it's actually permanently touching on the anti-tramp bar. So I think we need to get it on the ramp. If we can, it's so low, hopefully it'll go on. Uh, get it up in the air. And let's see what we can do with it. Okay, we got it up in the air at last. That was a complete mission. This thing is mega low. So let's have a look at our exhaust. It just seems loose to be on it. Oh. Yeah, something down the front. Yeah, found the problem. So the front exhaust clamp's just totally missing. I mean, that's the lowest point of this car so I expect it did have one on it at one time but it's just been dragged off I don't know what we can fit there because there's all scratch marks on the bottom of this exhaust I think I'll just straighten it up and just put a couple of tacks of weld either side and then if anybody ever needs to take it off they can just you know just get the tacks and then it will come off I think that's the way to go under here is really dirty so i think while i'm under here i'll get hot water and sponge and just go front to back and just try and get some of this grime off the paint looks good underneath it but uh yeah needs doing so we'll do that now let's crack on so with the exhaust i pushed it into place where it's going to live and give it two tacks of weld both sides. 
ground those welds down and then realized yeah it's just going to leak and sound awful so i remembered for dream car giveaway i'm doing the Corsa turbo i've ordered in the stainless exhaust for it and i've got these clamps with it now the clamps are side fixing it's going to keep our ground clearance good so i fitted that on jobs are good and that's another one ticked off our list so moving forward on the other jobs, I'm not going to bore you with them. So we're going to clean the underside of this car off. It's a lovely car. It's been driven as it should, but it's covered in crap underneath. So starting off at the front, cleaning all the floor pan off, all around that Type 9 five-speed gearbox and around the prop. Going back, it's got the anti-tramp bars. Give those and the diff a good clean. I've noticed now it's got gas gold adjustable shocks on the back, which is good. And also when I took off the front wheel to clean up in the arches, noticed it's actually got six pot front calipers on it. And again, it's got gas coilovers on it too. Now the cleaning's all done. We've got a few little more jobs. The dash top on this car is badly cracked. So I've removed that and fitted an original one. Also, sometimes when you shut the door, the latch sticks and it doesn't shut properly. So a bit of love juice later, and that's working a charm too. So on top of all that work, I also ordered in a bit of touch up where the car's quite low. It has scraped the ground a few times, so I touched all that in. We've got new door seals on it. Also, I realized the front side lights didn't work and that's because the headlights that were on it didn't have the little drill hole in the back for a side light bulb. So new headlights, the grill fell apart when I took it off, brilliant. So it's had a new grill and also it's had a new indicator stalk because the main beam didn't work at all. So yeah, it's all good to go. Dream car are gonna put it on uh, next Sunday, which is the 22nd of May, I believe it is. So make sure you join their Facebook, download the app so you know when it comes out. And yeah, if you win it, well done. Good luck if you enter. So that's it from me. I'll see you on the next one. Ta-da.